Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice. Today I'm going to be listening for the first time to Marcellino Pamoy performing the prayer. Now, a bunch of you have been asking for this for a long time, so it's about time that I did it. But I was a little surprised because the prayer is normally a duet. But I, as far as I understand, this is called, he does dual voices. So I think that means that he's going to sing both parts, but I'm really not sure. So let's get to it. I pray you'll be all right. That's his voice. <laughs> Watch us where we go. <laughs> And help us to be one <laughs> in times when we don't know. What? what? <laughs> this is this is so confusing. Like as a vocalist, I'm just like, oh, uh, he has I that sound at first was very unusual, and I was like, okay, so he's got a really different kind of voice, and that's why people talked about this. But then when he switched to be this true baritone round sound, I was like, well, how is that coming out of the same person? That is that is fascinating to me. He's he's able to manipulate his vocal tract to make these two separate sounds that are both very healthy sounding as well. So that's really cool. Um, but also the top sound, I, I'm sitting here thinking like, what exactly is going on there? And I believe that that is actually just a head voice. I don't think that's in falsetto. I think that is a really light head voice that he's got going on because he's able to condense the sound a lot more. And that's, but he's keeping it super light. And I have a feeling that that means that that register in his voice, he probably can take it really high because he's able to keep it so light and condensed. That's really cool. Let's keep listening. Okay, gonna pause. Uh, I have coached this song a number of times. And so I'm, I'm pretty picky about that part that he just did, especially because it's in Italian. Um, it, his Italian is pretty good. It isn't perfect. For example, he took a breath in the middle of fraternita at the end, which is all one word. So he took a breath in the middle of the word, which is kind of a no-no. Not kind of. It's a no-no. You shouldn't do that. Uh, but his vowels overall are quite pure. He's able to, he sounds pretty Italian, actually. That's impressive. Uh, I was really, really mesmerized by how he has a rounder sound, but he's not adding a lot of vibrato to the sound. So he's approaching it more with a, a little bit more of a pop stylization, yet with this rounder, more classical sound. So that, that really intrigued me. And I, I would love to hear more of how he uses that sound in other songs as well. Um, especially, uh, I was interested in when he would go to the top notes, he usually would hold them without vibrato, uh, maybe the whole time, or maybe he would give a little bit at the end. And when you find a, a rounder voice like this, there tends to be just a lot more air pressure build up underneath their chords that's helping them have a lot more power in the sound. So you tend to get a little bit more vibrato on that, which is part of the reason why it's surprising to me to hear him really control that sound and keep it straight for as long as he's doing. 
Uh, I want to go back just a little bit so you hear what I'm talking about with the Italian. Cure vowel is really great, but then there's a breath at the wrong spot. Let's go. Boop. that that's all that there is in that audition. Um, I wish that was longer. I really, I wish that that had gone on for so much longer. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go back and watch it again because I was really focusing on his Italian when he was also doing these really big full notes, which was really impressive for a guy to have uh, that much beauty in the tone and roundness in the sound and take it up that high and then be able to flip at the same time and go into another register like that without taking up any of that extra weight. That's hard to do. Um, so let's go back. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go back to here-ish. I think this should be close to the run that he added on the way up there. Listen to that one more time. That's again, he's giving more pop stylization to the section that usually is a little bit more classical. One of the other things that's really impressive to me about his voice is the way that he's not spreading the sound. So this is a term that singers sometimes use, that the sound sounds like it goes like this and it kind of diffuses. And instead, when he goes up to his top notes, it feels like they become more laser-like in quality. That is really good technique. Uh, they have to keep that focus as they go up high. It has to kind of feel like it goes vertical and maybe even out in this direction, rather than going like that on top notes. Um, if you go like this, the chords are more likely to have like some sort of crack in them or get a sound that just feels a little more airy in quality and lose a lot of power. And you can really tell that he continues with the same vocal consistency um, from that bottom note up to the top uh, here. It's really fascinating. And then he also applies that to the higher things that he sings as well. You know, hearing him more, it sounds like he might have done a falsetto on that note. I would really need to hear his voice a lot more to hear if he was in head voice or falsetto for that top register that he's using because it is so condensed. And usually you expect a falsetto that's going to be a little bit more, just have some more air around it. Um, so the way that the way that his voice functions, I doubted at the end. And I thought, you know, that might be falsetto that's just been really, really focused. Um, and that's because that last tone quality really, 
reminded me of a countertenor that I worked with a lot at LA Opera. Um, Anthony Roth Costanzo had a similar quality in his lower falsetto to Marcellito here. So I, I'm like, I was like, hmm, maybe it is falsetto. I would need to get to know Marcellito's voice a lot better to be 100% sure. Enigmatic. That is my word for Marcellito. It's a puzzle to me. Why would he develop these two sides of his voice? Baritone, countertenor. It sounds like maybe he trained at a conservatory at first and then decided to go into pop. I'm not sure. I'd like to hear him sing 10 different songs in 10 different styles so that I can just analyze and get to know his voice a lot better. So go ahead and make those recommendations down below. Overall performance, uh, I have to say, I'm, I'm struck by how well he was centered on the stage. You could see that he had his feet firmly planted, it seemed like his support system, his breath, it felt like it went all the way down into the stage, which is very, very good. And I never saw any undue tension in his neck. The few times that we did see it in shots, you could see some movement happening, but not excess tension. So you know that the sound is, is not overbearing to produce. And the quality of sound he was producing sounded like the vocal folds were really coming together easily with a lot of focus. So definitely some good technique behind him. Guys, I loved this recommendation. Thank you so much. Please continue to make recommendations down below. And also please come and say hello to me on Mondays and Fridays at 8 a.m. during live premieres. There is a live chat. So come and say hello. And if you don't want to miss out, uh, hit subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications. And I'll hope to see you soon. Bye.